Hello, this is a video on how to use the jump distribution calculator add-in to do calculations for the normal distribution and later we'll show how to use it to do calculations for other distributions. Before watching this video you should have reviewed the material in the basic statistical concepts notes on the normal distribution and watch the three assigned Annenberg videos on the normal distribution. Those are all in Learning Module 1A. So once you've installed the JUMP software, you'll also find in the course materials area there's a link to a JUMP add-in file. And add-ins are actually programs or collections of programs that are written by JUMP users that actually install um, extend the capabilities of jump. So once you install jump I then ask you to download the jump add-in file which is called teaching modules and equivalents. You click on that file once you download it once it pops up and asks you to if you want to install give it permission to install the add-in. Once you do it will give you an add-in menu and in the add-in menu uh, you will see here I have quite a few uh, add-ins. The one you're interested in is the one referred to as jump teaching modules and the particular one we're going to run is called the distribution calculator. Okay. So this is a calculator that helps you do probability and percentile calculations for a normal distribution. If I click on the button uh, for distribution, you will see that it also does it for other types of distributions. And, but we're, for now, we'll simply work with the normal. So let's suppose we have a normal distribution, and I will give it a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 2. Again, you should have reviewed the videos and the notes on the normal distribution. You now see a curve representing that normal distribution that is shown uh, to your right and then notice where it says type of calculation it'll do two types one if you input values of that normal distribution it will calculate probabilities for those values or if you input a probability which could also be viewed as a percentile it will then give you the corresponding percentile value for that normal distribution. So to illustrate, I'm going to start with input probabilities. So I have a distribution, again, mean of 10, standard deviation of 2. And I'm interested in, let's say, how many observations are less than 14. In other words, if I were interested in 14, say that is some sort of a specification uh, for this distribution, and I want to know how many are less than 14, notice it's about almost 98%. Okay. Well, what if I wanted to know how many were greater? Well, the area under the curve is always 1 by mathematical definition. That's true of all probability distributions. If I click on greater than, it says the area is 0 0.0228 because they have to add up to 1. Well, what if I wanted to know the probability of be being between two quantities? So let's say I'd like to know how many observations are between 8 and 12. The answer is about 68 percent and you should know that for a normal distribution 68 percent of the values are between plus and minus one standard deviation of the mean hence 8 to 10. Well let me type in 6 to 14. about 95 percent. Again, you should know for a normal distribution that plus or minus two standard deviations about the mean 
covers a little more than 95% of the distribution. And then finally, I'll go from 4 to 16. And we see it's 99.73%. And for a normal distribution, plus or minus three standard deviations of the mean covers 99.7% of all possible values that this distribution could generate. So it's very easy. I can put whatever values I want in here. I could say between 4 and 13, if I so desire. And it will calculate the corresponding probability, which is point about 93%. Again, uh, if I want the probability outside, I just it's just 1 minus the probability inside. OK, well, let's see what happens if instead of calculating probabilities, I would like to specify percentiles and then have the, the distribution calculator tell me what the corresponding percentile is. Well, suppose I'd like to know what is the 95th percentile of this distribution, that value of which 95% are less um, or than or equal to the value. The answer, 13.29. 95% of all values of this distribution are less than 13.289. Okay. What if I wanted to know the distribution greater than that, 95% okay, would be greater than 6.7. Okay. Or suppose I wanted to know the 97.5th percentile. This actually comes up a lot in practice, that's why I'm using it. It's almost 14, 13.92. Okay. Now, Suppose I wanted to know what we call the central probability value. Here's what it's telling you. I, I'm going to pick a distribution. And what I'm interested in, give me in the center of the distribution two values that cover 95% of the distribution. So the answer is about 6.1 to 13.9. 95% of all values lie within that distribution. And it's called the central probability because it's calculated symmetric about the mean. So sometimes we are actually very interested in calculating an interval of the distribution that will cover some percentage of the uh, values of the distribution. So in this case, maybe I'd like to know an upper and lower value that I could set as bounds and say I only want, for instance, products with characteristics that are between 6.1 and 13.9. And I'd know that that would cover 95% of all the product we produce. So this is actually how to use the distribution calculator. And you are asked to use it in quiz number one.